Hello everybody, welcome back. What's going on? We've got a little ladder battle here for you. We've been taking some time to mess around with the SC alternate campaign this week. So we put out a video about that uh, past couple of days, but uh, I wanted to get back to the ladder series here. Throw in some casting as well. Uh, the Starcraft alternate series has been going really, really good. I've been enjoying it a lot. That's a very fun, kind of hard mode of Starcraft campaign. So it's 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 fun. It's it's a bit silly, but it's a uh, it's a good time. There's a lot of weird units and special units and new voices and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of cool. But uh, we're back now, taking a look at. A big series here between Sulky and Free. Free is spawned down here in the bottom left, and I've heard that this is a pretty aggressive series. A lot of aggressive games here, and that should be fun to watch. So we're gonna get into this one. Guys, this video has been sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. They are sponsoring another video here, and I hope that uh, more of you guys will go down into the description Click on that link, download the game, give it a try. It is uh, in the spirit of Brood War, a fun RTS that is pretty hard to master, but very satisfying to play. So I hope you will uh, check that out. It's uh, in the beta stages, and um, if you could just give it a review, that would really, really help out the game, and it would help out the channel a lot too, guys. So here we are getting into this one. We've got a 12 hatchery with the pool follow-up. No gas just yet. Just scouting out that it is indeed a gateway first here from Free. So Free going to send across his first zealot. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with. I think we'll try to we'll have uh, him try to bug this. No, nope, not able to get anything done there. Not able to get a little slowdown here on this uh, zealot. Doesn't want to take the risk of taking a couple hits on this, so... Yeah, it's just going to retreat all the way back home, and Lings are on the way here. Just two sets. No third set just yet. Has the gas already down, and oh man, the drone is going to get blocked here. That is really frustrating. He's actually going to send another drone out to try and uh, maybe stop that from happening. Oh, that's very, very frustrating. I think he might have actually attacked his own drone with his, uh, with his drones there, because... He, I think he only attacked one of these that are actually in the drone line right now, and the other one got damaged, so I'm not sure where that damage came from, but I believe it was from the uh, the drones there. A little bit of friendly fire, unfortunately. It's like this probe didn't manage to get a kill, and with those two drones, he was able to, Sulky was able to get this hatchery down. Brought the other drone back now to... Hold down the fort here to get some minerals. No kills so far on any of these zealots. They're probably going to be hidden out here on the map. So Solki smartly going to send just one overlord over here. Second overlord going to head towards the natural. Maybe he'll send this one into the main. And the links are going to stay back home. That's a lot of links right now. Wow. Going for metabolic boost here. He did get the gas pretty early. That was a gas before third hatchery. And he's keeping the lings back at home to make sure that the probe can't get in here. Because he knows there's a probe somewhere out on the map. He's not sure exactly where. But he knows it's out there somewhere. So he's going to be looking for that Hydralis Den on the way. Now this is a style of Hydralis bust that has become a little bit more popular. Um, it's the style where we're going to get early ling speed and the early ling speed is meant to kind of trick the protoss oh man he's gonna let this through i would be smacking my keyboard right now if that happened to me but look at that great drone uh block there gonna keep the probe out of the main that happens to me so often man i spread my lings out and the probe just walks right through so frustrating man uh, but Sulky manages to keep the information hidden here. I think that Free will be kind of tipped off, maybe a little bit. He probably saw a few drones here, but it's too bad he didn't come over here and check this third base. He would have seen that there's hardly any drones over there right now. Mm, it's still not too much of a tip off. You really do want to see the layer, actually. 
the way I'm looking at it right now. Seeing the layer would actually give you the real information as to what's going on here, but we've got five hydras coming. We should have a second cannon at least. So two cannons here. Will we get a third now? His probe is ready to drop that. Corsair is on the way. You can drop the cannon if you're not totally sure. You can drop the cannon and then cancel as the Corsair is flying across the map. I think that's what the plan is here. So the Corsair is about to pop out, but it's already too late. The Hydras are on the way. So by the time the Corsair gets out there to see what's going on, it's too late to throw down his third cannon. So I like that he put this down. Like I said, he can absolutely cancel that. But the moment he sees the Hydras coming, he is going to keep that alive. Wait a second. When is he going to see this? Is he going to cancel or not? Let's see. Does he cancel here? Ah, he canceled. Oh, no. Free. I think he just got bamboozled, my guys. He just got bamboozled hard here. He's not even adding on another cannon right now. He's now just going to throw down that cannon. Totally thrown off here by that uh, little move by the Hydras walking around the top side there. It's exactly as I said. Throwing down the cannon and hoping that he could cancel that because there would be no Hydras on the way. And now he's going to have to desperately throw down cannons. But I'm really surprised to see Sulky not diving here. There's only two cannons and he is going to pull the trigger now finally. Lings are meant to block here at the front. The Hydras are going to try and snipe the, uh, the cannons. But you know what? I think that Free has held. I think this is too many cannons. Well, I say that and then he just goes for it. Kills two cannons really, really fast. There's a DT back here, but it's not being moved out. We've got four cannons. The fourth is just warping in right now. Looks like he'll at least get the wall. At least. That wall will be going down. I don't think we're going to be able to break through here, though. I think this is a little bit silly by free. We get over here. We see what's happening. That uh, hatcheries are being thrown down. That more drones are coming up. I think we should... Oh, he's actually going to go for it. Are you kidding me? This is kind of crazy. I'm going to dive right on top of these cannons. Wow, they fall really, really fast here. And so does the DT. Is Free just out of this one? Oh, man. I really underestimated the, uh, the speed at which he could break that down. Damn. Solki just crushing through that defense. I guess he needed probes out in the front. Pull the probes a little bit earlier so he can block. Not enough zealots, not enough probes in the front to slow down this Hydro's bust. And just like that, he gets taken down. Free, I mean, did the cancel really matter? I guess he, the, that cannon did, in the end, finish. So I guess that wasn't as big of a factor as I thought it was going to be. But this is a really powerful attack here by Soul Key. Uh, not the style I was thinking of, where you go for Ling Speed. You clear out all the uh, probes on the map. You clear out everything on the map. And then you just go for range. Just Hydra range. The Hydras are a bit slower uh, to show up to the front because they don't have that speed, but they can run right up with the Lings in the front blocking the Zealots and the ranged Hydras in the back killing the cannons. That's what I've seen before. This is a little bit different than that. That's your first game, guys. Let's jump into game number two. This video has been sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. It's an indie RTS that's being developed by a fan of Brood War. This is an early access free to play game, so it's not quite a finished product yet, but the developers are hoping for more RTS players to join the group. But the basic parameters have already been set. There's three races, Neon, Marble, and Rust, which you control, gather resources, make armies, pretty similar to Starcraft, but more of a cyberpunk, maybe Tron type feel. In the coming weeks, we're going to be trying out the game, playing a bit of it on stream as well. There's a link in the description down below where you can get the game on Steam. The creators of the game are very passionate and they want to create the best possible RTS. So they'd love to have some more seasoned RTS players try the game out, give them some feedback. I'd really appreciate it as well. Go down into the description. Again, click my link. Every one of you who downloads the game supports me directly, so I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to Neon Marble Rust for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the action.
Okay, guys, game number two here with free in the top right, Sulky in the bottom right with on Blitzy. And I went back to that first game, did a bit of analysis onto the build, and what Sulky actually did was very interesting. He went for gas quite a bit earlier than you would normally see, about 30 seconds beforehand at about uh, 2 minutes 30. He had that gas geyser started so i think that his plan from the beginning may have been to do that build i guess that's how he was able to get ling speed hydralis speed and hydralis range from what i've seen in the past you can't really afford all three of those upgrades and a lot of hydralis in order to bust so it felt like i was missing something there but looking back he got the gas a little bit faster uh, he was also a little bit slower with the Hydras. I, this is a build that I'm not really familiar with, and um, I guess it's really perfectly formulated for a gateway first timing. Because 973 is not super popular against, and it's not super good against gateway first, it's more uh, popular and good against the... Uh, forge first openers I guess that this is like a different a different style a different formulation of the build and look at this he's gonna go for 12 hatch again a um, little bit uh, am ambitious on this map I would say because it is a two-player map usually the Protoss player will send their probe ahead of time to just stop you from ever getting that so funny that he was able to get that down here um, yeah, it's interesting, very interesting to see a 973 used against the gateway first and in such a way with the speed first to make it look like a nor normal build. When you've got that speed, you don't expect to see 973. That's the build. I mean, that's the reason why that build I was talking about is very popular is because you get the speed and it kind of throws them off and then you come in with the ranged Hydras. Uh, just kind of battle down the zealots at the front with the lings and hydras and then kill the, kill the cannons, range the cannons down. But, you know, that's a new take. That's something new I haven't really seen before. And maybe we'll see Soul Key bust that out in the later stages of the ASL. That would be really cool to see. Now, in this game, he's trying to slow down the zealot once again. That zealot going to be a nuisance here because lings, again, only three sets now we don't have that early gas but throwing it down at the normal timing here three minutes this is more indicative of like a regular build here from soul key We're looking for that low hp drone where is it it's like it's been pulled back and out of harm's way pretty successfully here by soul key and he picked off the probe as well and this is the mini game that can be so annoying here as a zerg player you definitely need to hit your overlord while doing this Going up to 15, there's 16, and an Overlord should be next. But a lot of Lings on the way here. A lot of Lings once again. Is it really going to be committing to building quite a few attacking units right now? And that means that he will have to get something done with them. Three more sets of Lings coming. Just pure Ling out of Soul Key while he's waiting for this Overlord. He will be getting into his gas now, and I expect to see speed... If you're going to build this many lings, there it is. You're probably going to go with a speed build. And he's going to reveal some of these lings. And then right into the drone. This is interesting. Blocking the natural... Uh, the, the pathway into the main here with his lings. And putting that pressure on the front. I was thinking about maybe surrounding that zealot it looks like. Here comes the probe into the towards the main. He wants to get that scout on. So looking to block that for now. Send his lings back home to hopefully deal with that probe. Here we go. Can he slip by? Oh my god, it's so painful. He sees that there's no layer. He should know that there's a Hydralis Den on the way. And this is bad news for Soul Key, man. That is so frustrating. It's exactly what I've experienced in the past on the ladder as well. That the probe is just so slippery, man. It's so thin and slippery. It's very, very difficult to stop it getting in on any of your bases. And this, we've got so much larva just sitting here waiting to be used, but just can't be right now because we've built so many lings. 
so, so many lings and haven't been able to do anything with them. It's really quite frustrating here. Uh, uh, speed is going to be coming up right now. He's going for speed uh, and hydras. I don't think you can afford all of this, Soul Key. He's got still 250 minerals in the bank. I guess maybe he can get ling speed and range and speed on his hydras, but he's not building hydras is the problem. He's building lings right now, which makes me really concerned for Soul Key. This is, this is like, he's hoping that Free will move out. He's hoping that Free's gonna come out and get information, try to get information with these Zealots and that he's gonna be able to pounce and just kill all the Zealots or do some sort of run by, either one. But I think that Free will just build another cannon here and wait. We should see a cannon being started here by Free. I don't see it. Let's see the Corsair. Either. Okay, there's the Corsair. Where's the cannon? Range is on the way. Hydras are being morphed. Um, overlords need protecting right now. There's the Hydras being spotted. Free is being really greedy with not building cannons here. He got into the main. He saw no lair. Why are you being so, so greedy here? Hydras are going to be coming up. Zealots are in the front to tank. But there are a lot of units here right now. A lot of units for Soul Key. He might just be able to pop this base here. He might be able to pop that cannon. Start hitting these zealots beforehand. Force them back and then run forward and kill that cannon. <clears throat> Before the zealots can even react. Block them maybe with the lings. That could be good as well. A second cannon does finish. So he's waiting for that range. There's the range. He goes for it, but maybe a little bit too late. Hydra's here on the front line getting shot down by these cannons. Ling's going to come up from the side, but they, where were they during the beginning of this fight? They really should have been here to block the Zealots. I, I From what I understand, the point of this build with the uh, Ling speed and all the Lings is you want to like send the Lings right up to here and let, for, make the Zealots so they can't leave the base. And then the Hydras can stand all along the edge and just kill all the cannons. That's my understanding, but I guess it's just a little bit of a mistake here by Soul Key. Let's take a look at that execution one more time here because I think that it really was down to that execution here. Oh man, I'm really messing up. Sorry guys. All right, so here it was right here. So at this moment right here, what I think you want to do is you want to run up with the lings and block this po this point right here. You just run right up, maybe right click this zealot or right click the uh, the forge here and you block that. And then you run your hydras up against the wall and gun down the cannons as quickly as you can. You don't want to allow the zealots to come out. These lings maybe should be sent here and these lings can block on this side like this. And then you don't allow the zealots to damage your hydras and you let the hydras just rain down on those cannons. But look at how he uh, initializes this here. He doesn't bring the lings and he sends the hydras first. So these zealots are gonna be able to get out here and start to damage these hydras. That's already a pain. The zealots are what's really messing this up right now. And the fact that they're allowed out at all is quite the misstep here by Solki. Solki will lose all of his lings. The zealots are just too many in number, and with this number amount of cannons, you can't even force them to fight. Uh, if you'd been able to get up and kill like three cannons, and there's only one left, then you can actually force the zealots to just fight you. But you know what? <laughs> in the end, actually, I guess it's enough. We're gonna finish up our plus one here. There's just not enough uh, hydras to even fight this. He's got six Hydras on the way. I don't know what happened. Maybe there was a supply block we missed. Did we miss a supply block or something? Maybe we missed a uh, Overlord going down? What exactly happened here? I don't think he needed these extra Lings. That's for sure. We're going 954. No, 955. Five. Okay. Pretty much the equivalent of a 973. Does he lose an Overlord during this fight? He's supply blocked right now. He can't build anything. Um, right as he's coming up here, he's totally supply blocked. Yeah, this is a pretty bad supply block right now for 
soul key. Look, he's got five hydras on the way. A little bit brutal. Things just did not go quite right in this game for Soul Key. That's unfortunate. Did he actually lose this? I think he might have lost an Overlord here. Mm, no, it looks like he kept that Overlord alive. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a misstep here from Soul Key. That's fine. It happens to the best of them. We're going to jump into game number three. Now it's time for everybody's favorite map. We've got Troy here. With free spawning in the top left hand corner. Soul key in the bottom left. And you know it's going to be a wild one. Every time you see this map. I don't know why the pros haven't banned it. Maybe they're getting prepared. Preparing themselves for the potential of playing this in ASL. Yeah, that would be uh that would be pretty yikes. That would be pretty pretty scary to play on this map in the ASL. I really have no idea what kind of strategies these players are gonna be pulling out um, when they've got a lot of time to sort of like stew and you know wonder about what they could pull out, what, what kind of builds they can go for here. Um, and they know their opponent and you know, ladder match is a completely different thing uh, aside from a tournament match, right? If we've got something like the ASL where they know who their opponent is going to be, they know that they're going to have like a PVZ on this map, they can kind of sit and ruminate for a long time, try to figure out what's the best way to just abuse their opponent on a map like this. And I'm sure it's going to be mostly Protoss players abusing the Zerg players, but sometimes the zergs do come out with some fancy little builds like a shine or something like that could come out with something sneaky <clears throat> maybe one of the practice partners of shine one of the uh one of the other zergs that might be in communication with shine might uh get a build from him for th for this map we'll see but uh right now we've got a single gateway expand okay there it is second gateway it's kind of what i expected we haven't seen a lot of pro players do second gateway uh, on this map, but quite a few of them are picking up on it and it's really powerful in the ladder. So many players are doing it. It's a fine balancing act, but it's also a very fine balancing act in defending the two gateway expansion, the two gateway play from the Protoss is very scary. There's going to be kind of an unwieldy number of zealots at kind of strange times as well. You're not going to be totally ready for it. You're not going to be totally expecting it. Um, and they're going to suddenly hit you with a lot of zealots. Uh, plus the early game, you have quite a few opportunities to deal a lot of damage. Like the first zealot coming in here is going to be quite scary. And then once you get up to three zealots, uh, you can one-shot lings and then it becomes very... Uh, kind of frightening. We're going to have one Sunken Colony put down. This is a very unfortunate placement for the Sunken Colony. It kind of has to go there. You don't want to put it on the outside where it could be targeted down. Um, oh, is he going to lose the drone? That was really close. I guess it wouldn't have just quite killed. 16 damage on the, the side blades there. So he would have been able to survive. But there's the three Zealots. And the Sunken's going to finish in time. So looks like Sulky holds. Sulky going to be okay here. A little bit frightening though. And the position of the sunken is such that it's really going to block mining quite badly. Yeah, look at that mining. Just does not feel very good right now. Watch the drone here. What is it doing? Oh my gosh. Certainly isn't bouncing off the hatchery like it should be. It's taking quite the uh, quite the awkward path. I've never quite seen that, but where it turned around and looked the other direction before it delivered the minerals. It's like it's delivering it to the sunken colony, like special delivery FedEx. This is the this is the terrible um, <clears throat> delivery driver that delivers your package to the wrong house. It's like the zealots are gonna run right up on top of the sunken colony, and oh boy. This is exactly what I was talking about, guys. The awkward number of Zealots at just kind of a weird time here. Just going to bust this wide open. Sulky's sitting here thinking like, okay, I've got a Sunken. I should be okay, right? Nah. Nah, bro. You are in trouble town right now. And 
Gonna be losing some of these eggs as well, most likely. He's focusing down the eggs. Uh, could kill the lings right as they pop out, but instead he turns his attention to the lings that are popping, and maybe Sulky can hold this. He's really got to target down this probe in the midst of all this. Finally does get it. Man, that was very close. Very, very close. Just barely able to clear all of that up. I can tell you from personal experience, sometimes I'll make the same number of lings as Sulky did. Have the sunken colony and everything. And all the zealots survive on like 2 HP. Um, and I just die. Because none of them none of them went down and their DPS is way too high. The links can't even fight at all. But now he's sending links across the map and actually pressuring free here. Surrounding his zealots. Forcing them back. He's going to get one more zealot kill. And now it's the probe's turn to come out and fight. This is going really bad for free now. This is showing that tightrope walk that we were talking about earlier. The tightrope walk of uh, the Protoss trying to survive in the early game, but also, you know, the Zerg having a hard time as well. It looked really dire for uh, Soul Key there a moment ago, but now it's looking really, really good for Soul Key. Free is falling apart. He's trying to keep a cannon alive in his natural, and he's losing so many probes. He's losing probes in the main as well during this, but I don't think it's relevant. We're going to lose all the probes here right now. The cannon's probably going to go down here too. He has to cancel. He makes another one, but it gets forced to cancel. I don't know if that was killed or canceled. I think it was killed. More probes going down here in the main. Five, six lings here. Just wreaking havoc on the probe line. And yeah, this is just about done here. Looks like the cannon went down in the natural free. Desperately trying to hold on, but more and more links keep on running by. And we are on our last legs here as free. He's keeping some zealots alive still. But yeah, there goes down another one. He's going to try and make a cannon, I guess. But GG is called as more links arrive. Free has to tap out. Soul key, a beautiful hold. Let's go back and just take one last, one last look at that. Because it was truly beautiful the way that he handled this. Let's go ahead and speed up until the actual engagement happens here. I want to just see, you know, how Soul Key was doing here. He's got just enough drones to saturate all of his patches. He's not mining gas. He's getting another hatchery here in the main. I never even noticed that. A, a third hatchery coming up in main. That is very interesting. I might have to try this, actually. I might, have to, I, I might have to try this myself, this build. What did Soul Key do? Because this is something that's been hurting me a lot on the ladder. Uh, so just bear with me here for a second, guys. We went for 12 hatch. We'll go ahead and start the creep colony the moment the hatchery finishes. Um, we've got lings on the way here. Four sets of lings. And we're just delaying a little bit with the drones. I'm surprised he didn't actually go after the sunken colony here. But a lot of Protoss players will just go after the sunken. Looks like he didn't want to lose that, that zealot though to the lings as they were popping out. So he doesn't deal any damage to the sunken colony at all. Which puts him in a, a bit of a rough position. Now the gas goes down as soon as the sunken colony... Uh, is finished and or as soon as the sunken colony is down and on the way we've got all the links going we've got enough money we throw down the extractor and as soon as we have enough money for another hatchery put down that next hatchery so he's not producing any more links right now he's holding off on producing any extra sets of links and this is where the money for the hatchery comes is not producing right now he produced four sets eight links and one sunken, and he knows that that's enough to hold off these three zealots. So he's not going to produce right now. He's going to get his gas and his hatchery, but I, I bet we're going to see a bunch of lings being produced here quite soon. An overlord on the way, and then just pure ling after that. So overlord here at the natural, pure ling from the main. The gas is going to get mined here. And as soon as we've got 100 gas, we're going to start that ling speed. Link speed starts. Miners are back onto mineral patches here. And full on Ling production coming right now for our Zerg player. 
The sunken colony goes down way too fast here. You really want to be uh, in front of the sunken if you can. But look at this. The sunken just going to fall right away. Looks like he's going to pull the drone back to the main. And as soon as the sunken goes down, he pulls away from the zealots. Pull back from the zealots here. Because we're waiting on five more sets of lings. This third hatchery is not done yet. But as it finishes up here, more and more lings are going to start to spill out. We do need another uh, overlord here shortly. But he's about to take this fight. And that's going to open up a lot of supply for him here to build more lings. And there you can see he drops down to just 19 supply. And just pure ling production here is going to win the day for Soul Key. That's super interesting. I fight this build a lot on the ladder, so I really like to see uh, good Zerg players and how they can handle strong Protoss players uh, you know, pulling this build off, trying their best to put on that early pressure and just turns it around, puts it back onto, this, uh, onto the Protoss here. Love to see it. Guys, we're going to jump into our next game. It's coming right up. Well, I was told this was an aggro series, and I'm not disappointed in the slightest. Got some great games coming here from Soul Key and Free. That's interesting. I'm always curious where they're mining uh, here. I know that you mine on the t bottom of this patch and the top of this patch, but I'm surprised that we see Soul Key uh, mining from this patch before this one or this one or this one. I always felt that this was one of the slowest ones. I know this is the slowest one, but I thought that this was one of the slower ones. But I guess it's actually, um, if Sulky is doing this perfectly, and I assume that he is, being that he's, you know, one of the best players in the world right now. Look at this. Doing some real interesting juggling there to take one of the drones out. It's actually... This patch, this patch, this and this, and then you get this one, and then this one, this one, this one. So it goes like that, in that order. <laughs> I know that's difficult to remember, but for a Zerg player like me who plays uh, plenty of ladder games every single day, these are small subtleties that can actually help your game, and that's what this is all about, learning. We need to learn how to become... Stronger and stronger. That's why we do the Daily Dose series. As much for your entertainment as it is for my benefit. So here we go. We've got a Nexus first here. Out of his opponent, Free. He's noticed that in the past couple of games, it's been, you know, Sulky pretty hard-headed about getting out a hatchery first. So why not Nexus first here? I think it's a good idea. Might as well take the advantages where you can get them against the ASL champion, ASL 16, last season. Um, you need every advantage you can get, so I like it. I like it from free. Taking note of how the series has gone so far, he didn't even scout after Pylon, mind you. I think he went Pylon, Nexus, Forge scout. So very greedy here. Really incredibly greedy. A lot of players you'll see scout right after the pylon. And if they don't scout you first, they'll scout you with the next probe. I think they put down their nexus and they scout you with the probe after that. Um, I might be wrong on that. I'm not a Protoss player, but I think that's how it goes. But free being super greedy here. And look at this. So many wings were made. He went straight for six lings. I like to actually hold my my eggs or my uh, larva for quite some time. I like to keep my uh, my larva uh, held back, at least until I see what the uh, initial buildings are. The maximum I'm going to build is two sets of lings. So I usually build one and then a drone, and then I wait to see what we've got at the front before building any more lings. But soul key... Not going to do that. He built a lot of links here. He's going to try and round them in the front. Oh, man. This is uh, this is actually going to get in. This is going to get in here. Pretty good blocking. I mean, not bad at all. He's killing a lot more links than I would have expected. Unfortunate miss there on that final shot from the cannon. 
Pretty good blocking, but man. Sulky needs to do a lot here. He killed a few probes, but he needs to get more. I assume that he's going to be able to get quite a, quite a few kills, but... Yeah, he needs to do quite some damage here. He's going to get in. Start to kill a probe or two. Gets two already. Oh, God. Okay. Two probes already. That's pretty decent. Can he get more? I assume he will. Ooh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's enough damage. That is enough damage. Where is this zealot? Oh, my God. It's chasing this... This Ling up here in the top. Look, he can't even get... He can't even get this Ling. He was busy losing probes right now with the Zealot chasing this one Ling. That is crazy to me. I think that Free forgot about that, actually. I think Free completely forgot about his Zealot. Otherwise, he would have had it, you know, micering in in between these... Uh, uh, the, the probes here, trying to keep them alive. But he lost quite a few probes. That was totally worth it for Sulky. Not advisable, mind you to go for an attack like that because a lot of Protoss players will just have the Zealot and a couple of probes there and boom, you just can't make it in on a cross cross map like this. Build like 10 lings and try to run by. Not advisable, man. I would not, uh, would not want to see you doing that in your ladder game. Um, but he managed to make it work. He managed to get in there, kill enough probes. It's also tough if you're a lower rank player to even get any damage with your links and keep your build going at the same time. Links in the base can be a double-edged sword because you're spending so much time and attention uh, dealing with them or or utilizing them, trying to get kills with them. You might end up you know, losing more than they're worth uh, in terms of your build order just kind of being messed up. Looks like he's going to run behind this little pillar over here. Pretty annoying, but that will be get cleaned up eventually and we do have the third base on the way we've got that pretty early gas with the spire here i feel like the hatchery was quite late the third hatch but that's to be expected oh revealed everything man double stargate here in the main but he starts five mutas what am i watching Dude, the scout is perfect right now. He saw everything, and he still decided to build five mutas. I am flabbergasted here at what the idea is from Sulky. He cancels something. I guess that was maybe a Hydroden? That was weird. I'm going to have to go back and look at that and see what, what the heck he was building. There, now there's a Hydroden in the natural. He's going to do something really sneaky here. He's going to go for um, mutas and try to like hold back. Uh, free force him to build a bunch of cannons in the main and natural and then he's gonna bust him with Hydra and this could actually work pretty well but this is a very high execution build a very difficult to pull off build um, this is not something that I would usually try to pull out but Sulky is gonna go super aggressive here against free and free's got a lot of Corsairs already he's about to go to seven Corsairs so seven Corsairs are about to be here oh he loses one though He's getting the uh, moving shot, but more Scourge are going to come in. Dealing a lot more damage to these Corsair, dropping him down to three. So what was five and about to be seven is now just five once again. Four here, actually, which is not good. He only has one cannon at the front. We're making Hydras. This is going to be nasty. We don't even have a single drone over here at the third base. This is super crazy by soul key i'm gonna have to analyze this build pretty in depth here after this game because this is really out to lunch in terms of what we usually see uh zerg players do soul key is really throwing free for a loop right now free is worried about what wor free is worried about is getting out on the map and doing some damage with these corsairs not dying to like a huge uh scourge flood and then hopefully getting uh, Templar out in time to deal with Hydra Bust later on. He's not thinking about a Hydra Bust right now. So when he sees these Hydras, he's going to be completely thrown off. He hasn't even seen it yet. Oh, he has some idea, I guess. Maybe he did see something here. He's going to come in now with the Hydras. Free is completely caught unawares. And GG is called. Wow, a really cool game here by Sulky. Let's hop back in the... Uh, the timeline here and just see what the the soul key decided to do here was that another two minute 30 gas i think it might have been we're gonna go two times speed here so we can uh 
get the gist of this build without going it, it, watching rewatching the entire thing step by step let's see not too long of a game so it's not the biggest deal but i want to save on your guys's time here we go two minute 50 gas here okay it's a pretty standard time you wanted about three minutes in a normal build when you're going for a spire two minute 50 could be good to just make sure that you have scourge out in time to deal with any sort of corsair uh, but there has been delays and there were a lot of lings made all that kind of good stuff so not the biggest deal in the world here just getting that a little bit earlier so the lings get that run by as we were talking about earlier probe is here in the main is spotting everything there's the lair well before four minutes here and we're not even going to worry about those uh, those lings in the base. The probe is trying to do something. Trying to maybe uh, put some damage on some of these drones. You know, you're microing like crazy over on this side of the map. And trying to macro at the same time. You might not notice that a probe is hitting one of your drones. You might lose a drone. So that's always a good move. Uh, by free, but he loses the probe. He sends zealots around. And... It, we're going to start the Spire here. No third base yet. No third base really rings a lot of alarm bells, I think, for the Protoss. He's checking around. Where is that third? Go check over there at the 12. Go check over here. Just see if we can... Just can find out where the heck that base is. But he doesn't see it yet. And we started another gas. I want to go back just quickly. See when that gas actually started here. So the gas is going to start at what it what's the time here five minutes it's such an early second gas crazy crazy early he's got enough lings out to deal with the zealots that are being incremented out and as he tracks on the zealots it's really unfortunate he didn't just send this zealot out too maybe he could have walked in the natural uh with the third zealot and maybe seen something he throws down the third base but his drone count is so low. Look at this. Four drones on the minerals here. Let's see when he actually decides to um, pull out. So he sees the second gas. And he sees the spire. He knows he has to run home right away. So he gets home. And... Oh, wait. I was going to check and see what that was that he actually canceled in the main. Let's see here. Building going to go up in just a moment. What's he going to cancel? What's he going to build here? Okay. So this was the Hydra Den. So he did start a Hydra Den in the main. And then right as the Corsair was flying in, he canceled it. Because he doesn't want him to know that he's going to Hydra Bust him. When does he stop mining the gas? He builds two Hydra Dens. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Two Hydra Dens. And he starts range and speed at the same time. Wow, this is such a wild build, guys. So I guess once range and speed start, he's going to pull this off, right? You don't need that many... You don't need that many drones on gas to be able to build pure Hydra. You just need one... You just need a three on one gas. And you should be fine. And he's going to go back to... Alright, he's still actually building up quite a bit of gas. So we really need to pull off here. I think that's actually a mistake, but it's fine. Still a very interesting build here by Solki. And look at that. We're just 9-6. Nine, 9-6 six. Nine, six with double Hydroden. So interesting here. He's just pushing away these uh, Corsairs and... He loses two overlords, which is super annoying. But with five hydras already on the way, and all the hydras he's got out here at the front, he's able to break through. Really, really interesting game here by Soul Key. This is a super sneaky build by him. I love to see it. Let's jump into our next game. I gotta say, guys, these are some really cool games that we're getting to watch right now. Very, very cool. Shout out to Dude Nerd for putting this together, by the way. But this is uh, a really sick series that we 
we almost never get to see Sulky play like this. This is not Sulky's style. He he he's not known for being you know hyper aggressive Zerg with these high execution builds. This is much more of like a more of like a zealot or like an action action can sometimes pull out some really aggressive stuff or a shine uh in the old days shine was someone who would pull out these really crazy builds a lot of different types of hydralis busts that you've never seen before that can really catch the protoss player off guard i mean this doubt that game that we just watched i if you covered up the name and asked me who just played that i would say shine I actually would have said shine because that was such a convoluted kind of weird wacky build that we just saw and we're back here on Troy now and will we see another double gate I guess it's going to be that and this is the double gate that I've seen the most on this map is this double gate right here with just the tiny little gaps I think there's just one gap here and one gap here. I don't even know if this is a gap. I'm not sure on that. I think that might be Ling Tight. Don't quote me there, but this is really nice placement here. I think that any Protoss player who's stuck playing on this map, uh, who has to play on this map, maybe you have other vetoes that you prefer and you do end up having to play here. You're going to play against Zerg. I think that this is the best way to play. It's so dangerous in the early game. It's so hard to deal with. And we've got Solki opening with his just standard build, his 12 hatch. Uh, getting into his gas here. Very early gas, guys. Like a two minute gas. Super, super quick on that. He's going to be saving up Larva as well. Going to be pumping that Overlord. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. This was like a nine hatch or something like that. Yeah, this is really fast hatchery. That's a very late overlord. So yeah, I'm totally wrong here, guys. That was not a 12 hatch. Uh, we are on nine drones right now, just massive links. And this can be one of the best ways to deal with the, the Protoss build right now, uh, with the, the Protoss two gate, uh, is to go for a nine hatch. Nine hatch gives you so much more larva. You can pop a lot more Ling to be able to fight. Oh, he's bringing all the probes. What do we got? Five probes here? Yeah, this is also very scary what Free is doing right now. I've died to this many times. That's a lot of probes. Super, super annoying for the Zerg player to deal with. He's going to try and catch uh, Zealots that are coming uh, forward here. And he's going to wait to the last second before engaging this. This is not a good engage so far by Sulky. He needs to target down some of these probes here. Ooh, he got some pretty good surround on that lower zealot, but the lower zealot gets pulled away. And he's gonna have to cancel. Oh no. Well, this is brutal, guys. He loses his hatch off of a nine hatchery. I'll go back and take a look at that build one more time after the game, but I believe that was just straight nine hatch got murdered by this uh two gate play with five probes being pulled to the front yeah i don't know how you deal with this efficiently but solki did not handle this correctly and he is going to get punished severely for that maybe you need to pull your own drones or something to fight i have no idea he is going to be able to clear it but dude there's so many zealots now uh can be produced you're building links off of one hatch to deal with zealots Two gate zealot. Yeah, I don't like this at all. We've got two zealots back at home. We've got two out on the map. That's four zealots. He's going to be able to make a lot more zealots. Uh, plug up his wall or just stand here uh, at the front. You know, make a wall. Lings are coming across the map, but man, oh man, do they just suck at fighting this number of zealots, man. They are terrible at taking this on he's gonna try and maybe surround these ones on the outside but again there's just not a lot behind this like if we had another hatchery here maybe we could overwhelm like maybe we kill these zealots and then we overwhelm but just the rallies of zealots that are popping out are going to be able to deal with whatever lings come up here and this is just sad for sulky he's gonna have to tap out we're gonna go back and take a look at that build though i would like to see exactly what went down here <clears throat> 
because I was so focused on the Protoss build, I didn't get to see this. Yeah, we did go nine hat. And then what do we do? Drone. And then it should be ga uh, uh, pool here. I don't know. Can you actually uh, improve the mining by putting the pool here on this map? I think I, I do it or I did it. But maybe you can't. I don't actually know. All right. Maybe, uh, maybe you can't. So I'm going to put it up there. It's a little bit funny. Um, we're going to build another drone and then gas. And then overlord. And this is a build that's made to stop what free is doing. It is made to kill the two gate. It's exactly what any player, Zerg player, would prescribe to you. If you're like, oh, hey, man, I've been really struggling lately with uh, two gate play. Protoss keeps killing me with the two gate over and over again. They would tell you, you know, why don't you just try, you know, nine hatching? Learn to nine hatch. <clears throat> nine hatch will get the job done. But in this case, even with that build, even with the uh, correct counter, not going to be able to take it home for Soul Key. That's rough, man. I don't really know. I don't know. What's the what's the correct counter? What do you, what do, you do here? You can't start a Sunken right now. We don't have any money. Maybe you don't get gas. Just don't get gas and get a sunken. But how are you going to know that he's going to pull five probes? You don't see it. When do we see the probes get pulled? Right now. But it's already too late. We're already mining the gas. We don't have a sunken. Maybe, maybe as soon right now you see the probes being pulled. You see the probes being pulled here? Maybe you pull off of gas. Or at least take like two off of gas. And go build a sunken. Maybe just take one off of gas. Go build a sunken. Because Ling is just not going to be enough. Ah, so rough. It's so rough right now. Like if you start a sunken right now, maybe you can hold on. I don't know. It's still so tough. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below what should be the right solution uh in this uh in this game state right here where you see you got the you've got the nine hatch versus the two gate and you see five probes being pulled uh, or four probes being pulled to join the uh additional probe that's already out here on, on the map how, how the heck do you handle this i'd love to know let me know in the description all right in the comments excuse me jump into our next game Keep on rolling here. We've got free in the top left hand corner versus soul key in the bottom right. Dark origin is our next map and soul key has been showing some great innovation in this series so far, but that last game was all free, man. Five probes being pulled. What sick, sick play. What sick, good Protoss play, man. Just pull a bunch of probes with your zealots and win. Two gate style. I love it. Doesn't make me cringe at all. Well, look at this. He's going to do this again. Very interesting. You can see he really avoids mining this mineral patch. And right as he brings the drone, like the ninth drone, he's going to... What is this? Yeah, drone. Mm -mm. Okay, okay. We're going to go to 10 drone. It's interesting. I don't see an overlord just yet. There it is. So this is a bit of a different build. Um, He pulls the drone. He sends the drone to this patch. And the drone that was mining this patch comes back, returns, and then builds something. Either the spawning pool or the hatchery, depending. Um... He's going to go ahead and throw down the spawning pool. Gastric out a 10th drone and then build the overlord. We're going to have four lings here. No, two lings and a drone. <clears throat> With this early pool. This is a complete change up from what we've seen so far in the series. Soul Key pulling out a pretty much completely different build here. Unfortunate pylon block there. Going to be harassing him right now. We have a forge building with two photon cannons. He's going to see only two links popping, and he should cancel one. 
Um, yeah, this this one I think gets cancelled here. Yeah, more drones coming. Only two lings. I think you cancel this and then immediately make the nexus. I believe we did cancel the pylon as well. There it is. Nexus. All right. So cancel the pylon. Gets the money back from that. Cancels the uh, cannon. Gets the money back from that. And he can make a nexus. And so he can make his natural here. So everything kind of working out in the end looks like another two minute 30 gas here from sulky getting the gas before his natural hatchery this is going to open up some more options some spicy options from him that uh i'm very interested to see what he's going to what he's going to utilize here uh, yeah, like I said, guys, this is really interesting. Really, really cool to see Sulky play outside of his normal wheelhouse. And I wonder if this is the type of builds we're going to see out of him in the ASL coming up in the future. Or is he going to go back to his, like, really r rigid macro style that we're kind of used to? Where he's not really, you know, taking big risks. He's just trying to get into the late game and out macro you and just kind of outplay you um you know with the the mid game macro well i i love it i love to see the new sulky i want to see him throw in more kind of side uh curve balls to his game plans he's got a hydroden on the way again with the metabolic boost you're gonna catch this probe he does need to prevent this from getting up into his main you don't want to reveal the hydro tech just yet um, looks like he's just barely going to catch that. Okay. I thought that was actually going to slip through there. He did have two more links, uh, pairs of links popping out. So he might have been able to catch on that that was coming, but a zealot making its way over here. He does need to prevent that from moving in at least. Two overloads going to be pulled back right now. He's kind of feigning that he's pulling these back though, because they're not going to head all the way back home. When the Hydralis bus comes, it will be time to send them back up to the to the natural to make sure that there's no DT or anything that could stop him. So it's looking like very much like a 973 here thus far. He sent Lings all over the map, just kind of checking out what he can see, if he can spot a Zealot maybe. Uh, the Zealots did make their way back into this wall in, so... Uh, really no information right now for free. He's kind of playing blind right now. He doesn't have that second cannon that we talked about earlier. And we're getting into, you know, 9-7 here. We've got 5 and 4. Okay. So not quite 7-3. It's 5-5. Five, 9-5-5. Five. Five, five. So, which is basically 9-7-3. Just more distribution on the workers. Got Hydra's coming out now. That first Corsair is going to cross the map. We don't have a safety cannon here, which could be canceled later on. He's going to move around the Overlord here. Let the Overlord take some damage and then suddenly surprise and try to kill this. Going to get the Corsair. That would be huge. He gets it. Oh my god. This is so bad. This is so bad for free right now. He lost that Corsair. He can't really put on much pressure anymore. With two Corsairs, you can kill Overlords pretty quick gonna run up here with the speed hydras not making the same mistake as he did in previous games instead he's gonna run up right away and look at that picking off cannons before they can finish gg is called this is gonna be some sort of sneaky play here by free with double gateway follow-up just pumping out a lot of zealots and trying to deal some damage with corsair and sulky shuts it down hard here in this game he rocks this build with that speed Hydra play. He even went for, once again, the uh, range. So I guess if you want to go with this build, the key is this Gas Geyser, right? You want to get the Gas Geyser at 2 minutes 30 before you throw down your third base. You get the gas. You mine the gas immediately, get speed Keep building drones. You have a good number of links to prevent scouting with speed, which makes it very easy to block zealots and probes. And then you just build up to 973 or 955, whichever one is uh, floating your boat. 
And there you have it. Get Hydra speed, get Hydra range, and bust open the natural. Pretty crazy uh, new little bust here from Soul Key. It feels like he's he's hit on something that I don't think other players have caught on to yet. I'm not sure if uh, you guys have seen this build before. Have you seen the Ling speed with Hydra speed and Hydra range into the bust? That's not something I am used to, and I don't think that free is either. So we're going to have to see something like probe, Protoss players sending in their probe early to check for this gas geyser if they want, if, if you know, if they want to see like, hey, are you actually maybe going to Hydra bust me even though you have Ling speed? Uh, that could be coming with this build that Soul Key's put together. Very interesting stuff. I feel like there's always, or we're, we're almost always watching the meta shift in Brood War. Uh, especially when we're watching players at this high of a level, uh, people like Solki, who are, you know, the the front runners, the leaders of their particular race. Uh, always awesome to see. We've got even more games here, guys. So let's jump in to our next one. Another one. Solki, bottom left, free, top right, Citadel. Let's do this. I'm loving this series so far, guys. If you're loving it as well, but up, 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 uh, hit that like button. Let's uh, let's get into this one. Sulky, the beautiful red Zerg player, he's been showing us some new tech, some new builds that uh, I'm gonna be personally using on the ladder. That is for sure. I don't usually like to uh, Hydra Bust a lot, but you know, if we're learning a new build, why not throw that in here and there? Love to uh, love to put a new build in my arsenal. 973 got a little bit old, and I feel like Protoss players have kind of figured it out for the most part. They'll still make mistakes, obviously. Some players won't uh, defend it properly, but it feels like they're pretty darn cautious when you don't have Ling Speed. And, uh, you know, you're really trying to block the probe from getting the scout in the main to see if you've got a layer or not or a hydrogen or not. They get pretty cautious. They just start spamming down cannons, especially at B rank. Um, and then your 973 just does not work out. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit tough to get the 973. I might have to try out this guy's build, though, Soul Key. Coming up with some some fire for me here. Might be getting me some wins pretty soon, guys. That's what I'm thinking. Hatchery here at the net. Did go for the overpool this time. A little bit different. This is this is um more my flavor, my style here. We like the overpool on the SNSC stream. The overpool it does feel nice. It allows you to have enough links to deal with a gateway first opener very, very cleanly. Another Nexus first here out of your boy Free. Free. Getting feisty with the Nexus first, man. That's um It's a little bit risky to go for this. And he sees the lings, so what is he gonna do? Pull a bunch of probes? I think we need at least three probes at the front, right? Uh, we're going to pull one. Not even. Looks like we're not even going to pull one probe. Okay, one probe going to come up here. I think the Lynx can run by. Oh, it's so close. Just barely not. All right, well, he's going to get away with it completely scot-free. And this does not feel good as a Zerg player. I can tell you that. We've got the very fast Nexus. And we built a bunch of lings too. We didn't just build two, pair, you know, one pair of lings. We built two. Um, that's not the worst in the world, but you'd much rather have, you know, the earlier drone scout find its mark. You find your opponent. You go ahead uh, and just build pure drone. Maybe even just maybe one set of lings. Um, but if you can, just make only drones and try to catch back up uh, as quickly as possible be what you would like to do he managed to kill the probe at least 
So that's good. Getting rid of the probe now is pretty important. Kind of leave some question marks on the map here for free, but he's just going into a lair. He's doing everything nice and normal here. I actually didn't see the timing on the gas there, but second gas going to come up for Mr. Free here. With the with the, the gas guys are coming online, it's definitely going to be a Stargate build. Just pretty normal stuff here out of free. We're not going to go for some sort of like all-in zealot timing or an extra gateway in the natural or something like that. You know, put a gateway up here and try to just build up to like five zealots and walk out at a random time. That would be, uh, that would be my games. I'm not going to mix these up. My own games. <clears throat> because, uh... These guys are a lot better than that. They are going to play standard uh, when the situation calls for it. And it, right now, it definitely calls for it. We're, we're just going to get into a normal build here. Unfortunately, we don't have the probe out on the map. So we can't confirm that it's not Hydra. So we do need the second uh, cannon here, unfortunately. Um, it's a fact of life right now. I think he should push out with these zealots, actually. He's going to build another cannon. He's a bit freaked out. After all the games we've seen so far of Hydra Bust, I guess Free is a little shell-shocked at this point. I think this is the safety cannon, though. And as the Corsair crosses the map, he should be able to cancel this. We should see a cancel coming out here pretty soon. We'll keep that up. See if that ends up getting canceled. You can see... Uh, we're building Sunkins at home right now. We're not We're not going to bust. Uh, he doesn't see anything. Is he going to cancel? Yeah, there you go. He canceled just in time. So, Sunkins at home. Hydras. Uh, not, not on the menu here. It's going to be Mutas. Overlord might just barely go down. I think it will. But the, court, the, the Scourges are on the way. So, we need to bail out as soon as this is dead. That's dead. Go! Go! What are we doing? Go! Gotta run, man. You got to run. He's gonna come up here and see the third base. First Corsair, really, really important here, guys. Whoa, we're going for Gravitic Drive? Reaver time? Hold on. Now, this is insane, guys. Um. Oh my gosh. Do not lose those Corsairs. Those Corsairs are so important. Flyer Carapace here and Gravitic Drive. This is going to be a wacky game, guys. Oh, he got, some, got another kill. Two Overlords went down. That's really frustrating for its soul key. Um, we actually need a second Stargate here. I don't think he's realized it yet, but there's going to be a lot of mutas out. Um, I don't think he saw the second, uh, the second gas for soul key, unfortunately. So he's... Probably not going to be prepared for this. What the heck? Killing his own um, egg here because the Reaver can't get out. The Reaver can't get out at all. <laughs> the Reaver just cannot get out. All right, he's going to have to pick it up here. Has five Corsairs. Looks like one of them went down. This one that uh, was running home, I think, just went down. Or did it? Might have survived. Yeah, it did actually survive. Wow, it made it back home. Wow, that Reaver... He's like at the disco or something. He's having a grand old time. Um, I don't think we know right now as Soul Key what's happening because he hasn't seen... Okay, he runs in. Just going to throw a Ling in to see if the Forge is spinning. It's not. I don't know if he actually saw... Like, how much he actually saw. Yeah, he, he only saw to here. There's no way that he saw the Reavers. So we've got Hydra upgrades coming. We've got some Scourge. Uh, we've got some mutas. This is gonna be wacky, guys. This is gonna be a little bit wild. Uh, Gravitic Drive is done. We've got two shuttles and two more Reavers are about to pop. Some Zealots walking out without speed here at 8 minutes 30. That's, uh, questionable, to say the least. I think we're gonna come over here and drop. Or maybe we'll, we'll go for the main... Either one. It's scary, guys. This is a very scary build. I've played a lot against this. I played a game recently against this that was really wild. 
Um, some players have asked me, some people have asked me, some viewers have asked me, uh, would you ever do a uh, cast from one of your own games? And I, I think about it. Maybe one of those games that I did, uh, that I played against Reaver Corsair would be funny to, wa to, to watch, but um, haven't decided yet. Oh, man. Scourge are going to connect on quite a few of these Corsairs. Still four left, though. Oh! He lost it. He lost the two Reavers. That's it. Sulky did it. He did it. Picks it off. Oh, man. Free is butt hurt right now, dude. He is so butt hurt. I'm telling you right now, this man is just so mad right now. He is so mad. This, this is everything. This is like when your first recall doesn't go off uh, versus Terran. You know, like you fly in the uh, Arbiter and throw down the recall and uh, you accidentally like click one more time, right click with the Arbiter. And so it like cancels the recall and it doesn't go off. Um, and so you miss out on the recall and then you totally lose mo all momentum in the game. And the Terran player gets another base and they have like a big push. Yeah, everything is screwed now. There's no way he can take a base. Uh, there's no way he's going to be able to deal any damage, I think. He's going to try and come out with this shuttle. Um, two Reavers. I mean, he is just so boned. <laughs> it's it's really hard to say anything else about this game, guys. This has gone horribly bad for free. Um, he even threw away that one. You, you saw him like just let the other... Uh, shuttle die i thought that he was gonna tap out right when that happened but he didn't and now i don't know where we're at i think he's just gonna sit here and hope that you know sulky just dives and loses everything and he is losing a lot here uh, all the mutas are gonna go down the hydras are just gonna explode uh maybe this is good enough trade perhaps i don't know i still feel like he could just run in here and kill both of the the Reavers here. All right. I mean, he killed everything. Everything died, and there's still two Reavers. And there's about to be two more Reavers. I don't know. I still think it's bad, but that kind of brings back free a little bit. It's a momentum play. This, uh, I like most things with Protoss, it's a momentum play. You need to have Reavers landing and dealing a lot of damage. And uh, we're going to go into Disruption Web now. This is exactly what happened to me on ladder several times. Disruption web comes out. Reavers are everywhere. They're trying to like land in your base. They'll just fly in and just land right here. And then just disruption web right here and just kill your main. Super annoying, guys. It's, it is so annoying to deal with. But, uh, oh my god. Is he going to fly into that? No, do not fly into that. Please, free. Find a way to keep these shuttles alive, man. Otherwise, this game is just totally over he's gonna fly around okay disruption webs just about done and he's gonna have plus two he he built a fleet beacon right because he got disruption web so i mean we've got fleet beacon and four reavers he's gonna come in here and disruption web the two sunken colonies i guess um yeah disruption web there it is wow that disruption web right there actually stops that sunken this disruption web stops that sunken how ridiculous is that that is crazy. Disruption web broken. Look at this. Oh my god. Another disruption web gonna go down. He needs one over here. One more disruption web right there. Oh, I don't think he's got it. I guess he doesn't have enough energy. He's trying to find the one that has enough energy. He picks up some of the Reavers and bails out. Ooh. I mean, this would have been okay had this been the first drop. Right? If he had done that with the first drop, maybe he would have been okay. Would have been all right, but this is the second drop of the after the first one failed, which means this is a much worse position. We're gonna have cannons coming up here, trying to take a third base right now, but we can probably just take this out, uh, which is pure Hydra. He loses the shuttle, unfortunately. The second Reaver gonna fall. We've got two more Reavers popping out here. He can juggle a little bit. One more disruption web does come down. That's actually going to block his cannons from firing, funnily enough. With two Reavers here, maybe he can hold on, but this is still a losing position here for free. 
is really trying his best to get the uh, cannons online here to, to defend. And, I mean, we've just got so many Hydras coming out right now. He can jump on top of one of these Reavers. He's going to get it. No juggling by free, unfortunately. Scourge going to come in here. They cannot connect on anything. But do we have Disruption Web for this? More Reavers going to come out. Disruption Web is not forthcoming here. Free a little bit slow with this. Man, some of the players in my games are faster with Disruption Web. I don't know how they do it. But I, I guess he doesn't have energy on a lot of these. There's some energy there. Um, I think he's got like two or three. It's 125 energy, I believe, for Disruption Web. But GG is called. Free taps out. Oh. Oh, free. Oh, it's rough, man. It's really, truly rough. Um, that play is very hard to pull off. But if you get a good first drop, like let's say that first drop, when he comes out, he hides the uh, shuttles properly and defends them properly with his Corsairs. And then, for instance, he flies in here and he drops right here. It gets really nasty because you could target down the spire. Anything that's coming through this little gap here gets obliterated. All the drones in the main are likely to just die as well. The hydras popping into the eggs will die. Everything will die and it becomes really, really hard. Um, and then as soon as basically you finish cleaning this up, the next wave of reavers is coming out. Maybe he's already taking a base. He's dropping Reavers here with a bunch of cannons. Maybe dropping here with a bunch of cannons. Maybe dropping here with a bunch of cannons. Maybe dropping here with a bunch of cannons. There's so many opportunities for the Reaver player to start snagging bases. This is not a great base to take. It was kind of by necessity here. And then, you know, with the next drop, he's got the uh, Disruption Web. It gets really scary. Very hard to deal with. Uh, but really, Soul Key... Getting those great Scourge connections in the early game made the entirety of the difference there. It made up, you know, his entire advantage was just picking off those Reavers. And that's all you need is just the first Reaver attack to be shut shut down properly. And it totally takes the wind out of the sails. Great game there by Soul Key. A little bit unfortunate for free. We're going to jump into our final game of this recording of this video, guys. Strap in. One last game between Free and Soul Key. All right, one more game here. Soul Key in the top left. Free in the top right. On Retro, finally. Gonna be heading to this map for our last game. And if you go back and take a look at the engagement from Soul Key in that last game, it was magnificent. The way that he was splitting his Scourge, it was like the... The uh, shuttle and uh, Corsairs were coming through the middle. He had Scourge over here. I think Muta's over here. And then he had just a couple of Scourge down here. And, uh, you know, Free was batting away the two sides. And he let his shuttles go a little bit too far ahead. Because he thought he was handling both armies from Sulky. But he just had a smattering of, uh, you know, Scourge sitting here. And the moment that they went too far ahead of the army group, boom, he hits them. That's not supposed to happen. Scourge are slower than Graviton boosted shuttles. So that should never happen in a pro game. Really, truly should not be the case. But Sulky did a great job distracting and laying out traps for this filthy, filthy Reaver player that we have here. And now a one base strategy. Wow. One base. This is something I see all the time on ladder two. All the time. I don't know why players do this. But a lot of players on the ladder go for one base build. And uh, it makes me wonder, like, did you think that this was a versus Terran or something? And you just put down your pylon in the main? And then you realize that, oh, actually it's, it's Zerg. Now I have to play one base. Or is this actually your desired strategy? It's kind of confusing to me. We're going to see Free, how he plays out the one base here. He's built one Zealot. He's not even moving it. I don't know what's going on. Why is the Zealot sitting there? He's going to build a Dragoon. 
He sees the bases from Sulky, and Sulky has no idea where he is at right now. You can see he's sending Lings down to the bottom right. He's sending uh, Lings down to the bottom left. Um, he's like really questioning where the heck is this player right now. He's seen the natural here, and he doesn't see anything. He hasn't seen the Zealot on the, the high ground either, so he's going to send the Overload back in, and this might actually get the kill for free. Free might actually get the kill with the with the Dragoon here. Yeah, I think he will. I think he will get the kill. There we go. Now Sulky sees it, and he put his hatchery up here. That's not a good uh, situation. Uh, Sulky really thought that there was not a Protoss in the top right. Um, he loses his first Overlord. Ouch. And his hatchery, third hatchery is coming up. He doesn't cancel it either. This is going to be wacky. This is going to be really wacky. I think that Sulky is going to try to defend this with pure Ling and maybe an Evo Chamber with a, a Spore. Um, I think that's the way to go. Uh, but he can't build anything right now. He's stuck. He's supply stuck. This is a great time to push in uh, as the uh, as a Protoss player because you know he just killed his Overlord. He can't build anything for sure. I'm going to fly in here to find an Overlord. Hydroden's on the way. He didn't go Evo Chamber, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Um, I'm going to chase down this probe here in the bottom left. I don't know what that's for. Must have been the scout, I guess. Overlord gonna go down here. Hydras are being made, but yeah, you know, it's kind of a weird situation. We've already lost one Overlord. We're gonna lose a second. Uh, and now maybe even a third if he controls properly. Okay. Um, he tries to do as much damage as he can. Hydras right now are very slow. Will he get this? No. Does have to pull back. So at least he saves the third Overlord. Man, losing three Overlords at the beginning of the game is so bad. It's so bad for a Zerg player. I can't even describe it, how bad it is. It is nightmarish, nightmarishly bad. Now we don't have a, a follow-up tech really here besides the Corsair. I thought we were gonna see him go like Citadel really fast and then try to go DT. But looks like instead he's gonna try and get a Nexus and jumping right on top of this cannon. But my god, it's taking a lot of uh, a lot of lings to kill this cannon. We didn't leave two zealots on the ramp, unfortunately, for free, which is something you always have to do uh, because this, just this exact scenario. If you don't have a full wall of zealots to block, then you do need to keep zealots on the ramp, and he just failed to do that. Now more links are going to come in here. Is Sulky just going to bust him wide open? Which is pure Ling right now? All right. Okay. Well, this has not gone very well for free. But may hey, maybe he holds on right here. Maybe he holds on. Well, he is going to keep this cannon alive somehow. Oh my god, he kept it alive there. 3 HP. Uh, Sulky is burning right now. With the desire to kill this cannon. This is crazy. Okay, he's gonna run by. Get it! Okay, he does get it. And run by into the main. Yeah. Run by into the main. Two cannons, I think, are about to finish here. There's one. Um, Build a gateway right here or something. Please. Free, what are we doing? Build something. Alright, he's not gonna build it. I think he's managed to hold this, though. Hydras are making their way to the front. However... I just do have speed, and they're going to have range soon. He's going to build more cannons. He just needs cannon. Just pure cannon. That's all we need right now. Zealots and cannons. Citadel is on the way. Two more cannons are coming up. Nexus is almost complete. He just needs to hold on here. Three more Hydras are on their way. This two-kill Corsair will be forced back. I guess it got another kill somewhere here. Maybe actually supply blocking... Um, Sulky for a little bit. That's uh, pretty clutch if that's that one uh, Corsair managed to do that. More cannons are going to finish. Oh, this is a little bit demoralizing, I think, for Sulky. He almost got in there. That 3 HP cannon saved the day, kind of. You know, forcing him to kind of 
throw away more links to try and kill that. Um, finish that off. Not allow that to stand, but maybe it would have been better to just let the 3 HP cannon sit there. Because it's been replaced with a full HP one. Uh, a 3 HP cannon you can gun down really fast with Hydra. But now there's a full HP one in its place and... That's too many cannons, man. We're gonna have to transition. Oh, this feels really... <laughs> This does not feel very, uh, very f nice for uh, Sulky right now. He is hating his life, I can tell you that. We do not like this position here at all. More sunk or more s cannons coming up. Wow. More and more cannons right now. He's not built another Corsair. He's going into Storm right away. Expecting just a full-on bust, but we're actually switching into drones right now. We should have speed here soon. I think speed actually might be done. No, it's not. Wow. No speed. That's a little unfortunate. We could push out here with speed if we had it and put a lot of pressure onto the Zerg who's just building drones. Only drones right now. But since we're not doing that, and we've only built cannons uh, and going into storm, we're not going to have a timing right now, which can deal any damage to Solki, and Solki's going to get away with a lot of droning. Extra hatches being thrown down everywhere. And even going into a Spire. Spire here going to come out soon, guys. We might see a Mutalist transition. That could be really strong. A lot of players like to go for Lurker here because, you know, the obviously the Robo tech will be very, very late when you're going into all this stuff. Like, Templar Archives, you've built the extra forges, you've gone for Stargate off of one base, and all of these cannons, your Robo's gonna be super late, so a lot of players will go for that tech, but Soul Key on the old reliable Mutalist tech here. I'm gonna bust that out, and uh, hopefully hold back free here, maybe get in, get some damage on him. Uh, since he's not been building. And look at that. F Robo going to come down. Because he's aware of that. I think because Free is aware that that is a potential follow-up. That's why he's not going for... I'm really shocked that he's not building another... Like, I'm seriously shocked right now, guys. That we're not seeing another S Corsair come out. Because those cannons were not necessary. All he needed was one Corsair to go find that out. This is not necessary. All he needs is one Corsair to find that out. Um... We actually need more... We, we need more Corsairs right now. Because look at all these mutas. He's not going to be able to push. This is a big mistake by Free, I gotta say. Free not making Corsairs right now? This stinks. This stinks to high heaven, man. This is... This is uh, this is brutal. He might be able to get a good storm here. No, not a great storm. Oh, a second storm comes down. Both of them whiff completely. And now the Templar are going to get picked off. Soul Key out of control right now. He's going to kill off this cannon here. The Dragoons are kind of helpless to stop it from happening. Another cannon will come up. But he's just gunning down probe after probe after probe. And look at that. Evening out the worker supply here. Another storm comes down. Two more storms, in fact. He might be able to pick off one more Templar. He gets that one last Templar. And one more. Total four Templar kills and like a... You know, a handful of probes as well. Pretty gnarly here. With more mutas coming out. Sulky gonna go rinse and repeat. Send out another group of mutas right now to deal even more damage. This is really, really rough for our Protoss player here. He's gonna try to move out right now, but look at this. He thinks he got rid of all the mutas. There's a full group more of mutas now at the front and he's gonna cut off the uh, templar from getting up onto this high ground and then he can run up the high ground with his uh with his hydras now we actually need the zealots over here we don't need them to defend the the mutas obviously mutas are gonna do what mutas do regardless of if the zealots are there or not so Unfortunately, Free is going to get a little bit bamboozled here. You can see now he's sending out these Zealots, realizing, oh boy, I actually need my Zealots over here to stop the Hydras, and they are just not in place in time. 
Looks like another Templar are going to go down. The Zealots cannot hold back these Hydras, not when they're already on that high ground. And there you have it, guys. Solki taking complete control of this game. He is toying with free now. Whatever he does next will be the right answer because he has just played this out brilliantly and free has made some major missteps, even though he did a, a pretty decent job of making his way out of, you know, that one base style. You can still see that there are major holes in his game when it comes to the, you know, one base, one gate right into Stargate. This is kind of a, a special build, a teched out build that not a lot of players on the ladder are totally familiar with, that you can surprise opponents with, but you really have to know what you're doing. And it seems like Free is just not all there with this build. He hasn't had, you know, had time to kind of uh, figure it out completely. He's gonna run up here. He got a great storm on a bunch of those Hydras, so he may be able to take this third base. But look at the saturation over here. 49 workers for Sulky. He's going to start adding on, you know, creeps down here, sunkins and spores. Uh, to just make sure that there's no counterattack potential possible for Free. Free going to try to move out on the map. I don't know if it's a good idea. I think just hanging back and uh, sitting on this high ground, trying to get this base up online is probably going to be better for him. It's not like Solki's being super greedy. He's only added on one base. Uh, he hasn't, you know, taken bottom left and trying to take, you know, multiple bases at the same time. He's just spreading out. He's got a few extra drones added on. Oh, he's going to lose his Templar. Oh, he just barely keeps it alive. He's got two storms on that almost. We really got to keep that uh, Templar in the game. Otherwise, he will just get kicked out of here. He's got one Templar with storm. So this Templar is everything right here. This is so important. These two storms, this one only has one, guys. We need this Templar here, but look at that. It goes down without casting a single storm. The second Templar dies while only casting a storm on the, the Mutas. So the Hydras reign free and the Dragoons cannot stand against them. He will be forced back. And this is it, I think, guys. Surround is coming through. A great concave here by... Uh, soul key on these hydras and some more zealots are gonna pop out another templar will make its way to the front it does not have that energy and as the uh dragoons fall the blue blood is spilled the series is winding down to an end soul key dominating performance here for the final game and free he got some wins he did play some good games but overall i think he's gonna be pretty salty about this one especially that reaver game man and this is just so many uh, busts in a row as well. So many aggressive Zerg games from Soul Key. You love to see it. I know that uh, Free is pretty thrown off now at this point. You know, <laughs> I'm sure that most players expect Soul Key to play a macro game against them, but it seems like Soul Key just has something else in mind. He's practicing his aggressive play. Uh, whether that's because he doesn't respect free or if he's just, you know, gearing up for that type of style and he wants to, well, I mean, he doesn't even know that it's free, right? It's a barcode account. We didn't see any chatter back and forth. So maybe he's just on the ladder practicing um, just aggro builds. It's not that he doesn't respect free. I'm sorry I even brought that up. But as you can see, it is a barcode account. So uh, forget about that point. Definitely Soul Key gearing up for some more aggression in ZVP. Dialing in his builds and practicing on the ladder, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you guys tomorrow.